Now, here I talk about a teaching of mine called Joyful Victory. It has three main parts and ten points. Three main parts that has ten points within it. Now, the three main parts are like this. First, live in the love and provision of God. Live in the love, provision, and plan of God. First. Second, take care of different problems in life. Third part, then we, our life can be raised up to serve God. It's very simple. How can we raise up people to serve God? First, to live in the love of God and His provision and His perfect plan. And then take care of different problems in our life. And then we can be trained to serve God. Because many people say it's too hard to serve God, too hard to do well. But I want to say, when you have the love of God, the plan of God, the provision of God, and then you take care of different problems in your life, then you're ready. So we can tell people it's not so difficult. Because some people think, there are too many difficulties. I have too many difficulties. I have to overcome all these difficulties before I can serve God. But I want to say this. It's not so difficult. We can raise up more people to serve God. And let them know. You just live in the love of God, the provision and plan, and then you take care of different problems, and then your life can be raised up. And then we'll see how far we go today. And then after that will be Monday that we'll continue. And then also I will continue with counseling and preaching and different things. So uh, we start first start with this, okay? The three, three parts are first, live in the love, provision, and plan of God. That's the first part. Now, if you have a email address or WhatsApp, I can send it to you. And then you can see a joyful victory. And the second part is, take care of different problems in life. Provision and plan of God. And number three, we can bear fruit and serve God. Of course, with training, then we can be trained to serve God. Okay, now we come to, it has ten, ten little points. And the first part, live in a love, provision and plan of God has three points. The first point I already talked about, how to live in the love of God and be motivated by God's love. I talked about that the first day. And then the second is, live in the provision of God. Many people dare not serve God because they fear they don't have the provision. They, they're afraid they don't have money. Now, and that hinders many people and they think that I need to have the money first before I can serve God. But the Bible tells us, now this point I'm, is very brief because some of this is very brief. Just Matthew 6.33, that you know, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things will be added to you. That's the promise of God. That when you seek His kingdom and His righteousness, seek His kingdom, do you remember what it means? First, seek the kingdom of salvation or the kingdom of grace. That people can be saved, we want people saved. And the second part is, seek the kingdom of the Lordship of God. Wherever God is the Lord, there is His kingdom. So when we seek the kingdom, you say, everything I do, I don't want to have anger. Everything I do, I want to be, to be loving to people, to be kind to people, to be helping people. I don't want any sin. So you let God be your Lord. God knows it and He will bless you. I just, now I, the other day I shared with you 10 people, 10 different people have said 10 times they have received messages that God tell them to learn from me or to, um, that they saw my vision or uh, in a dream or in a vision. And then I want to say that too. There are other people who also heard from God to learn from Pastor Yu. Now I'm not boasting, I'm saying, I want to say again, God chose me when I was, I had problems, I was weak and I have sins. 
But after I experienced the Holy Spirit, I really dedicated my life to God. I really put down all my sins and followed God totally. And God is happy with that. And God told different people, told them to learn from me. To learn how to live the Christian life and how to serve God. So what I'm saying is, if you really love God, God knows it. And God will bless you. So I hope that you know that when God knows that you seek God's kingdom, He will add all these things to you. Have you experienced that? Let me ask you. Have you experienced provision from God? Yes. Raise your hand if you have. Now, if you have experienced that, can He continue to provide for you? Yes. Yes. So if He can pro continue to provide for you, then you have faith to step up more to His ministry. Now, it doesn't mean you start with the most difficult. You don't say, you know, some people say, Pastor Yip, can you arrange me for me to go to Hong Kong? I said, why do you want to go to Hong Kong? Well, I just want to go to different countries. I said, there's much need in Africa. In Hong Kong, there are too many preachers. Many people said they are called to go to Hong Kong. There are preachers everywhere. And there are special meetings all the time. You know, every week I see some special announcement, but I don't go to those meetings. And people like to go to richer countries and then they can preach there. But I said, that's not necessary following God's will. It's, but they just want to do something because they want to. So don't just dream of big dreams, but do evangelism and bless the people around you. And then God is happy with you and He bless your life. So, do you believe that God can provide for you? Yes. Now the reason why many people don't get the provision, because they have sins and frustration and anger, disobedience, fights in the family, all this that blocks the blessings of God. So I hope that you will learn to take care of this problem. And I will talk about this as time goes on, how to take care of this problem. Okay, so that's the, the second point of, uh, now, it is, now I talk about the 10 points. The first point is to live in the love of God and to, to be motivated by God's love. Second point is, believe in God's provision when we seek His kingdom. When we seek His kingdom, we believe in God's provision. And the third point is, follow God's perfect plan. God has a perfect plan for us. Psalm 139 verses 16 to 17. Can you write this down? Psalm 139 verses 16 to 17. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is your sum of them. Psalm 139 verse 16 to 17. Psalm 139, 16 to 17. So it says that all the days ordained for my life have been written in your book before one of the days came to me. So before I lived the first day, God has already written all the plans of my life. This book. Now then you say, well, if God has written it, then I don't have to do anything. It will come true. Now it is written, but it won't come true automatically. You turn to Romans 12, 1 to 2. How the plan of God came into being, came true. Romans 12, 1. Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Then you'll be able to discern and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Now here it talks about how you can discern God's will. God is a perfect plan. Let me tell you, if I follow my life, before I was filled with the Holy Spirit, I would not be able to follow the perfect plan of God. Because at that time, I did not follow God totally. And allow certain sins, I allow certain sins to take control of me sometimes. And although I repent, but I did not take care of all my sins at that time. Romans 12, 1 to 2, it says how you can discern God's perfect will first. Dedicate your body as a living sacrifice to God. So dedicate your life. Yes, my Lord, my life belongs to you. My life doesn't belong to money. My life doesn't belong to the world. My life belongs to you. 
and I want to follow you totally. If you have that heart, I don't want, I'm not after money. Now many people serve God for money. They want people give more money. Now, if they want people give more money so that they can reach out more is right. But they don't have to push people to give money. We encourage people, God will bless you when you give and God remember your giving. But you don't push people. You have to give. If you want to be rich, give, give, give. That's pressure. The Bible doesn't have that kind of language. So first, we dedicate our body as a living sacrifice. Let me tell you now, because God provides for me, I actually don't receive salary in my ministry now. I don't receive any salary. I do it all for free, but I'm, I do it gladly. Because God provides for me, I don't need any more money. I just dedicate my life to God, even though I work very hard. It doesn't matter. I don't have to get more money. What do you do with more money? You eat more, you become fatter, bigger. You have a bigger house, you only can only sleep on one bed. You have a bigger car, you can only sit on one seat. What is the use of big house and big car? I mean, it might be more convenient, but is it worth it? If we dedicate our life to God, it's more worth it. So dedicate your life to God and do not conform to the world. The world wants money. The world, for many people, they want to get married to a rich man, to a beautiful girl. They just want something for themselves. They want fun. They want enjoyment. But we, these things, it's not wrong, but if we pursue this thing, it's wrong. It's not wrong that you enjoy the birds and the flowers. I enjoy those too. I, when I go to places, I enjoy the birds and the flowers and enjoy anything around me. There's a lizard here, two lizards. I was sitting there and I like to watch it. <laughs> I enjoy that. I enjoy that. Even watching the lizards, I enjoy that. So that's not wrong, but don't pursue worldly enjoyment as the purpose of your life. And then be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Then your mind is transformed. I want to follow God and serve God. Then we can start to discern the good and perfect and pleasing will of God. Start to discern. To discern and to enter it, and to enter a deeper level, are different. Listen, you start to realize the perfect will of God is to serve God. Doesn't mean you can serve God well. But you want to enter it, you serve God, and then you enter in the high level ministry. Then your ministry is full of joy, full of love, full of freedom, and people are transformed by your words. Then you're entering a higher place. Now for me, now, I believe God has a plan, but I'm still seeking God's will. How can I spread this teaching to more people? Not for my glory, but I just want more people to change. God, what can I do? What can I do? So I seek God's will. And then God arranged people to come to me. Very interesting. There is one woman who has an organization in Hong Kong called Nisi Organization. And they arrange different kind of meetings. And this lady came to me and said, I saw your teaching. I like it. Can you teach me? And then we can arrange meetings for you. So people come to me. And there is a person with prophetic gift with a team. And then she offered to come to teach me my group. So these are ways that God will open the way for me. When you follow God's plan, He will open the way for you. Let me ask you, have you entered God's plan in some way? Have you noticed how at a certain point you enter the plan of God? Have you noticed that? Has anyone noticed that you enter the plan of God and then enter a higher plan? How many of you have noticed that? That you start to enter a higher plan of God? Anyone here? Uh, do, you, do you understand the question? Have you found yourself entering God's plan? First, are you in God's plan now? Are you entering God's plan? Or are you pursuing money? Or are you trying to pursue loving God and serving God? That's already in God's plan. Yeah. How many are? You're entering loving God and serving God. Okay, if you are, please raise your hand. Okay? 
That's good. Next question. How many of you have noticed that you go higher in that plan now than before? You have entered some strategic ministry. You can enter, you can do ministry more efficiently than before. You can do it with more power. Okay, can you raise your hand? Now that's wonderful. But let me tell you, none of us has gone into the most, most perfect will yet. Because if you enter the most perfect will, it will be very different, very powerful. So we all pursue to enter closer and closer to the perfect will of God. But the more we submit to God, the more we serve God, we will enter a higher and higher and higher will. Do you want to? Yes. Now, also, I want to say this. Every time we sin, we fall down lower on the plan of God. We don't stay up there all the time. If we have pride or greed for money or anger or any kind of lust, we'll go lower. And then, but we repent, we can go back up again. But never as much as before. Let me explain this. Good time. If it's a serious sin, it's hard to go back to the higher level. For instance, if something has happened to your marriage, in fact, your ministry, can you still go very high in your ministry? It's difficult, right? Mm -hmm. And then if you have offended many people, is it easy to go back to the, high, the perfect plan of God? It's hard. So we have to be aware. Any sin is going to destroy the plan. But with repentance, we can go back up again. But there will be hindrances, especially when we get older and older. Some people say, I'm 19 years old now, 90, 90. I want to serve God with all my heart now. It could be too late, right? So I hope that you treasure that and don't think that any sin, the sins doesn't matter. You, some people say, I've repented already. You repented, God forgives you. But it doesn't mean you can go back up again. Now sometimes God can give us a second chance. But if starting from the beginning, we have obeyed God and love God and serve God all the way from the beginning, you will go higher and higher. Now you cannot go as high, but you might go to this level. But the more we destroy this plan, the lower we'll go. Do you understand this? Yes. Have you seen some powerful preacher, powerful prophets, they claim they are following God, but the, by what they teach, by what they do, it shows that they are not following God's plan. And actually, they lose credit. People don't like them. People know that there's something wrong. There's something wrong about their lives. And then they lose credit. Have you seen that? Yes. If they have followed God with honesty, not for money, the life would go higher and higher. Yeah. And some people say it's hard to please God. Let me tell you. God told me this. It's easy to please God. When we are sin, we repent, God is happy. Whenever we pray to God, God is happy. Whenever we obey and serve God, God is happy. In that way, every day you say, I'm pleasing God, God is happy with me. That way you have more strength. But some people say, I have many shortcomings. But it doesn't matter. Your shortcomings try to overcome them. But at least now you have the things you have done for God, you thank God for that. I've done it for God, hallelujah, and God is happy with me. That way you have motivation to go higher and higher. If not, you're always accusing yourself. I did not do so well, I did not do so well. So I hope you always look at the good side, what you're doing well, and then thank God for that and continue to work on it. In the past, when I was a pastor at first, I just thought being a pastor, I would preach, I would teach, I would do evangelism, I would take care of the church, and that's it. I, don't, I cannot think of anything else. But now, God has given me higher will that I can train people for ministry. And then later God gave me the heart to train pastors because pastors have more influence. But I also noticed some pastors are more keen to learn. Some pastors are not keen to learn. Now, it's not my responsibility who learn, learns. It's not my responsibility. But it's true that some pastors thought they have it, but they're not learning what happened is. They cannot go higher. 
They just limit themselves. They cannot go higher. Can you say it with me? Yes. If I want to go higher, if I, want to go higher I need to be humble. I need to be humble. To learn more from God. To learn more from God. And from godly people. And from godly people. So I hope you don't say I've learned enough because we're all. I need to learn too. My wife reminds me of certain things, I listen to her and I thank her. And there are people who give me suggestions, I will listen to them. So it's good to be humble. And then we can find a better and better will. And there are some people who said, I will help you to print out this in books. Help you to publicize this so that more people can learn it. So that's how God opened the way for us. Okay, now, so we have gone to the first part. Live in the love of God and to be motivated by God. The second point is to uh, believe in the provision of God so we know we have provision to serve God. And third is to follow the perfect will of God. So I hope in your life you're seeking the perfect will of God. Okay, now we go to the second part of joyful victory. This part is about take care of problems. And point number four, just now three points. Point number four is not to be affected by people. This teaching is very important. Can you tap on the person next to you? It's very important that we learn not to be affected by people. Can you tap on the person next to you? Okay, let me ask you. Have you been affected negatively by people? Has people hurt you? Have some people make it hard for you to serve God? Have people discouraged you? Now, let me ask you in another way. Has some, have some people blessed you? Have some people blessed you? So we find that we have many blessings from people, but we also have many hurts from people. Why? Have you discerned, trying to discern the people around you? Have you noticed that there are some people that always yell at people and get angry? Have you noticed that? Yes. There are always people yes. like that. So these people in the heart is full of what? Anger, frustration, greed, negative things. Are there people around you like that? Are there people around you like that? Yes. Because all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So, can you discern them? Can you discern the people who really love God? And then the people who are lazy in God, who are lukewarm in God, can you discern? People who have anger, frustration, who cannot control the temper, can you discern them? Okay. Now, if you can discern them, if I use an illustration, if this is one person that always get angry, so he has a lot of anger inside. Let me ask you this question. Do you have to take his anger? No. Do you have to take his anger? No. Sorry. We don't have to take his anger, right? If we take his anger, what will happen? There are some people who get angry easily. If we take this anger, what will happen to us? We'll become like them. Yeah, we'll become like them. Yeah. We'll be angry, we'll be hurt, we'll be unhappy. So God told me this very simple truth. Very simple. You remember it, you'll be okay. If these people have sins and problems, don't eat the garbage. Say it. If these people have problem, don't eat the garbage. Now, but don't tell them what you say is garbage. Don't tell them. You just know. You just discern. Their anger is garbage, right? Do you want to eat garbage? Do you eat garbage every day? You don't like garbage, right? Okay, you know what is garbage and what is good food, right? So, when people are angry, how come people take the anger? Let me ask you this question. Why do so many people take the anger of other people? Why? Say that. 
I said the reason people take the anger on other people is that whenever you tell someone to do this thing, then they are not doing the rightful thing. So it's like what you told them to do, they are disobeying you. So it makes you angry. Yes, I know. But what I'm saying is, this person is problem. He has a lot of anger. Do I have to take it? Why do I have to take it? Do I have to eat his garbage? Is that garbage? Do I have to take it? But why do people take it? Why do people take the anger of other people? And I'm asking you this question. Why can you answer loudly? Just loudly from your seat. Why? Yeah. Other people can take other people's anger sometimes. Okay, because of relationship. Let me ask you. Because of relationship, if your husband or wife or children or parents, they have sins, do I have to take their sins? No. no. So do we have to take the garbage because of the relationship? No. no. So we have to discern that. Because the Bible says, to obey God and not to obey man is right. We don't have to obey men if they are wrong. So what are some reasons why we eat garbage? I'm asking you to think. What are some reasons why we take the anger or the frustration or the hurt feelings of other people? Yes? The end of the lesson because we depend on them. We depend on them, yes. okay. Let me ask you now. Do we really depend on them or depend on God? No. Can you believe that we depend on God? Yes. If that person doesn't give me money anymore, will I die, die of starvation? No. no. So. Do we have to depend on people? No. Okay, so I'm, tr I'm trying to ask you to think of the reason why we are affected by people and then we try to break those reasons. Okay? Uh, uh, sometimes uh, circumstances can compare you to just react negatively to people. Okay, the circumstances cause us to react naturally. Let me ask you, is natural reaction always right? No. Natural reaction. If someone kick you, what is your natural reaction? You kick back. Is that a good reaction? No. no. So when we discern, natural reaction are not necessarily right. Actually, most of the time, natural reaction are not right. Most of the time. So we discern that, then we can take care of that and say, he kicks at me, do I have to kick back? No. No. He yells at me, do I have to yell back? No. No. Now I'm trying to, this is natural reaction. What are the reasons? I'm trying to have you think. Now the teaching God gave me is this. Don't eat garbage. Eat the good things from God and from people. There are people who could give us good things. Take those things, but don't eat the garbage from people who are angry and who are sinning. Any other reason why people take garbage? Yeah, relationship. Because of peer pressure. Relationship, you already said that. Peer no. pressure. Law, because of law. If I love you and you have garbage because I want to please you, I want to take back on that garbage. Okay. <laughs> now because of love. <laughs> but that kind of love is not real love. It's it's like a, the connection. It's a connection. It's a connection. The connection. I don't want to break the connection. But actually we can be wise without breaking the connection. But we just don't take it. And what was the reason you said? Peer pressure. Peer pressure, okay? When people try to give us pressure, do we have to take it? No. We don't have to take, have to take it. it. Now let me tell you one reason many people eat garbage. They say, it is not fair. If he did that to me, I have to do it back. Is that one reason? Yeah. Because that person did something to me, I have to do it back. But is it wise? Is it wise? <laughs> Is it wise to do it back to him? No. No. Because if he yell at me and I yell back, what happens is we have two angry men yelling at each other, fighting with each other. Is it going to do any good? No. Now, if you see Pastor Yip yelling with someone because that person yelled at me and I yell back, and then you say, who is Pastor Yip? How come he says he teaches to be calm and then now he's yelling? That would destroy my ministry, right? Yes. Is it worth it to pay it back to the person? No. Okay, any more reasons why people are affected by garbage and eat other people's garbage? Yeah. To some point, uh, 
People look for favor. People look favor. Yeah. Favor. Favor. Yeah. Favor people. Yeah. Okay. Because this person is important, therefore I listen to him. Right. Favor that person. Okay? Yeah. But let me ask you: Do we depend on God to bless us, to give us favor, or depend on people? <laughs> yeah, so do we have to favor them? Yes. Because the Holy Spirit is not really in us. I think I cannot understand. Because the Holy Spirit is not really in us. Okay, that's spiritual weakness. Okay, spiritual weakness. That's one real reason. Okay, but whatever reason, is it worth it to eat the garbage from people? No. <laughs> that's it. So we understand, when someone is angry with me, I don't have to take it. If someone is slow, for instance, I ask someone to do something. He's slow, he's doing very slowly, and do it not right, not in the right way. Do I have to get angry? Yes. Do I have to get angry? What happens if I get angry? What happens if I get angry? If someone does not do something right, and then I get angry, what are the results? The result is, it will be worse than before, right? It will be worse. Yes. Sometimes, if I get angry, for example, I get my children, right? I instruct you, I say, do this one, the way I, I let them home, right? And I return, you do do it, as I expect you to do. If I get angry tomorrow, if I ask you to do it, you say, if I do do it better, daddy will get angry. Okay. But if I am just a dear friend to you, that you, maybe you ask me to do something, and uh, you get angry, maybe tomorrow, even you ask me, I'll, I'll, I'll get an excuse that I, I don't want to be bothered with you, but I will not do it. So okay. we have two different... Okay. Now, the situation, if we're not happy with someone doing something and we get angry, the person might not want to do it. So, anger really doesn't do good. Now, for, how about your child who doesn't obey you? And then you come back, he doesn't do what you told him to do. And then you get angry. Will he obey more? No. Actually, he become more rebellious. It's better to talk to your child. You know, you are very precious. You are very important. I love you and God loves you and your life can go higher and higher and you can tell your son you look at my life I'm going higher because of God do you want to go higher by God listen to me always give people hope and tell them their life can go higher if you sin and if you don't obey you destroy your life do you want your life destroyed so reason with them and pray with them and also lead them to repentance so that they learn the truth instead of beating them. Now beating sometimes can do some good but if every day beating he'll just get more more hardy, more tough, harder to change. So it's better to reason and lead them to believe. But what my point is if we get angry does it make things go better? No. So I hope you understand this truth. Very simple. Don't eat garbage. We don't have to be angry. If we get angry, things will get worse. Now some people say, I want this thing done, and it's not done, so I have to get angry. But people like that, they always have a lot of frustration. They always have a lot of things they find people not doing, and they have a lot of pressure. Let me tell you, the people around me, they're very happy to serve God with me. I don't have to yell at them. I don't have to be angry with them. I let them know how precious they are. I let them know what they're doing well. And God is pleased with them and I'm happy with them. And what they're doing is changing the people and they're good testimonies all the time. We don't have to get angry with each other. We're all happy serving God together. Let me ask you, in heaven, do people have to, be get, to get angry to make things happen in heaven? No. no. So when people understand how good God is and understand the perfect plan of God, we don't have to use anger to fulfill our will because God can help us. Okay? I hope you agree with this. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You agree that, with this. There's something wrong yeah. somewhere there. For instance, 
you're pastoring people in a church. And maybe devil using one or two <laughs> to create confusion in your life. To, to, to do one in my life? That is, devil using one or two to create confusion. Confusion. It will become disobedient. Okay. And uh, it become rebellious. Afterwards, the person realizes that he did wrong and continue to ask for forgiveness. But it does not change my attitude. What would be your position? Okay. Now there are two things. One thing is I'm not affected by the person. I discern the person. Second, I will find a way to resolve the problem. Now, just now I just talk about my attitude. I'm not affected by him. But I would also try to find a way to handle the problem. If I notice something wrong with the person's life, I would talk with the person. I'll ask him questions. Now I notice something happened like this. Can you tell me what happened? Can you tell me why you did it? And then when the person talks, he has, if he has frustration or negative thinking, and then I'll ask him, why are you angry? What caused you to be angry? And what caused you to behave like that? And then if the person cannot answer me and he keep doing that, I can give him warning. If this happened again, I'm not going to let you serve because it's going to destroy the spirit here. Now that is to take care of the problem. But I don't have to do it in anger. If I do it in anger, it's going to destroy me too and destroy the relationship. And with anyone problematic like that, I won't handle it myself. I will have a team of people with me to handle it together so that it's not just, the person will not say it's pastor against me. It's not pastor, it's the team together. So when we understand this person has problem and is not repentant, then he has to sit on the sinner's bench. <laughs> <laughs> then we won't give him the responsibilities. We won't give him the responsibility, but I give him chance. So we discern. But the point is, if there are bad people like that, does anger solve the problem? But so many people use this, so, so many people use anger, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because why? Because it's their habit. The habit they got from their parents, from other people, even from pastors, Spirit and diet. even whoever around them. Now, to me, this is like generation curse. The way of life that is sinful, we have to discern it. And so, when we have this wisdom to discern and handle it with peace and love and kindness and wisdom, that is real wisdom. So I hope you hunger for this real wisdom. Do you hunger for that? Yes. I don't have to hang, handle it in anger. Anyone, no matter who it is, whether it's my co-workers, whether it's someone who come to fix my restroom, Common, who come to do some job in the house. If he doesn't do a good job, if I get angry, he's going to do something secretly to destroy my house. So I'm not going to be angry. I just find out the problem and then try to find a way to resolve the problem. If I find that this person is not trustworthy, I will not hire him again. I will not let him work for me again. So I discern and then I will decide. But when I do any action, I do not let anger affect me. Do you agree with this policy? No, that policy that works sometimes in a developed nation. Sometimes here in Africa, some are rude. Some are too wicked. They won't get money from you today, tomorrow, next tomorrow. They continue working one thing over and over. And if you allow them, they'll be swapping money for you. Okay. They can't do the job and they have no mind. You say they are sorry for their mistake. They don't want to use you as an insult. Okay, now if someone like that, this person just want money and doesn't want to do his job, right? If I yell at him, would he change to a better person? He won't. He would just get more angry. So my way is not to hire him anymore. Because to, is it easy to change a sinner to be a good person? Is it easy to change someone no, from a sinner to a good person? No, if he has no conscience, yelling is not going to do the job. 
So we have to find ways how to handle the situation. The wisdom is more important. Let me ask you this. Have you found an anger useful in handling any problem? Actually, it usually makes it worse. Okay, now I'm going to talk about how not to be affected by people. The way. Okay? Very important, the way. Have you seen crazy people on the street? Have you ever seen crazy people on the street? Yes. Crazy people yell at people, have you seen that? Yes. Have some crazy people yell at you? Okay, if they yell at you, do you get angry and go home and get very unhappy? Someone on the street yell at me today. Oh. Do you get angry for a long time? No. Because you know he is crazy. So do you take things seriously from a crazy man? No. Okay. Okay, they hit on me, then I run away. When he already hit me, I cannot change that. God will protect me, but I cannot change that. If I hit back, it's worse. He'll fight with you. He'll pull you down to the dirt and make you all dirty and beat you up, hurt you more. Right? So it's not going to help. Okay, now, crazy people we don't have to take, right? Let me change it. Sinners do we have to take. Now, sinners, compared to crazy people, are similar. But sinners sometimes seem to be normal. They're walking normally, working normally, but they have something wrong inside. They get angry easily, they do things bad to people, they hurt people, they steal from people. These people, do I have to take it from them? Do I have to take it seriously? No. No, but people do, because they say they're normal. This person seems normal. He works and he goes, you know, he, he has his family, it seems normal. But inside him, it is not normal. He's a sinner. Do I have the ticket? No, sir. No. But how? The way is like this. Just like we can turn off the angry words of a crazy man, we can turn off the words of a sinner. When he yelled at you, he said, you fool! Do I suddenly become a fool? If he yells at me, do I become a fool? He said, you're useless, I'll become useless. No. Does his word have authority? No. No. But we feel unfair, so we fight back. But when we fight back, we lose more. So the best is, when I discern this is a sinner, I don't have to take it. Even if he yells at me, will I die from it? Will no. I die from it? I won't die. Will I lose something because of that? No. So why should I get angry? If I get angry, if you see Pastor Yip get angry, you say, I don't want to listen to his teaching. If he gets angry so easily. But, you know, there are things that happen to me in an unfair way, but I say it doesn't matter because God will pay back to me. Listen to me, this is the wisdom from God. When negative words come to you, many people will just take it. But in Chinese Kung Fu, we have this saying. If someone beats at you, now come here and demonstrate. If someone hit me, instead of taking it now, you slowly, give me a punch, slowly. Watch. Slowly. Instead of taking it, I can do this. Now watch me. I put it to the side. I'll do it again. <laughs> that way, I just use a little strength, I can move his hand away, right? Mm -hmm. In Chinese, we call that you, a little weight, I can move away a very heavy weight. So if he yell at me, I don't want to take it. If I take it, I can get crazy. But I don't have to take it. He said, you fool. God says, I'm not a fool. He said, you, you are useless. God says, I'm not useless. If he says something about me that's true, I say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry I did it. Please forgive me, I try to do it again. I will say it gently to him. If he say you fool, I say, okay, thank you for reminding me. I'll try to not to be a fool, okay? I'll, I'll work on it. Help me not to be a fool. So I take it in a humorous way. Instead of take it seriously. Do you think you can do it? Yes, sir. When you understand the reason behind that, then you can do it. When we know that, main thing, one thing, 
We don't have to take the garbage. We don't have to eat garbage. Is it simple? Yeah. Let me tell you, it's God who taught me this. Very simple, right? Very simple way. So, now, other than that, not to take it, sometimes it's also our own faults. For instance, your husband and wife yell at you, it's not just his or her fault. Sometimes we don't listen to them. We don't respond to them. We don't help them. We're not nice to them. So these are something we need to learn. Now many husband and wife talk like this, you didn't do that. And then the other person say, you did not do that also. And I don't like you. And he said, I don't like you too. And then they start a fight for nothing. Have you seen that? Yes. Starting a fight for nothing, us for something very small. But whenever I didn't do something well, my wife would not yell at me. She would, she would just say, you know, sometimes I hang my clothes in a, not in a right way. She said, look at the shirt now. It's, it's suffering now. <laughs> so she's telling me, it's not hanging right. So I said, okay, well, it has characteristic. Okay, I'll put it back. So we handle problems in a humorous way, in a gentle way. Does it hurt when we do that? Yes, no. Yes. Do we? No. When we do it in a humorous way, does it hurt? No. Do we have to hurt each other if they do something wrong? No. So this, I hope you believe this. Now, another truth I hope you remember. People and relationship, and then things are done right, which is more important. Things are done right, or people and relationship, which is more important. Things are done right. Things are done right. That's more important, right? That's more important. Okay. How about other people? What do you think? Now, in your house, sometimes, you know, something is not put in the right way. And then you get angry. And then it breaks the relationship with your husband or wife. Now, this thing is not done right. So which is more important? That this is done right or the relationship with your husband and wife? Relationship. Relationship. People are more important than things. Say it with me. People are more important than things. Because you want things done perfectly, go to heaven. Heaven, the things are done perfectly there, right? On earth, things are not perfect. Is there a perfect church? Is there a perfect pastor? No. No. If you look for perfection and you get angry because the pastor is not perfect, you'll be angry all the time. But it doesn't matter if he's not perfect. So long as he's trying, that's fine. You pray for him and support him, and he's trying. We support him and encourage him. That way he'll do better. But if we say, Pastor, you're not doing this, you're not doing that, the pastor has more frustration, and he cannot do a good job. But if we give him more support and appreciation, he'll do a better job. Is that correct? Yes. So remember this. People and relationships are more important than things. Say it. People, People and relationships relationship are more important than things. things. So now, it doesn't mean we don't want to do things better. We, want to, we do. But when we want to do things better, do we have to do it in a way that hurt people? No. We can talk about it and ask them why it was done wrong the last time and how we can do it better. Okay? Now, I'm going to give you some Bible verses. Psalm 118, verse 6. Psalm 118, verse 6. The Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. What can people do to me? The Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. What can men do to me? So this verse says, the Lord helps me. I, cannot, I don't have to be afraid of anyone. What can they do to me? That way, I, can, I don't have to be afraid of anyone. Pardon me? Psalm 118, verse 6. Psalm 118, verse 6. Genesis, Genesis 50, verse 20. Genesis 5, 0, verse 2, 0. Joseph said to his brothers, his brothers sold him. But he said to them, you intended to harm me, but God intended for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. 
Now, if you were Joseph, sold by your brothers, what is the natural reaction? Jail them first. Yeah, natural reaction is anger and trying to do back. Now, if Joseph was full of anger when he was taken to Egypt, would the presence of the Lord be with him? No. But he, by the help of God, God helped him to handle the anger. Would he have anger? Would he have some anger? If he's human, he must have some anger. I mean, he would have some negative feelings, right? But it depends on whether he took care of that in a short time or many years. How long do you think he took care of that problem? Many years? No, it must be a short time. That is why he has a good presence of God, a strong presence of God. And God blessed his work. And then the master saw that he was so good and raised him up to be the steward of his house. So we can see that. God blessed everything. Even though the mistress betrayed him, but he was in the prison, and then he was raised up again in the prison. And then finally in the palace. So when a person doesn't take the negative words from people, then he can be blessed by God. If a person takes the negative words of people and get angry all the time, he will not have the joy and the freedom of God. When you look at me, when you look at me, how I preach, hallelujah, praise the Lord. <laughs> you notice that I'm free. But let me ask you, have I had people hurting me before? Are there people who hurt me before? Of course, yes. Let me tell you, I have had many experiences of being hurt by people for years. But how could I overcome? It's the Lord speaking to me, especially after I experienced the Holy Spirit. One time, I shared with someone about my experience of experiencing the Holy Spirit. And then a the person was angry on the phone. And she hung up the phone. And then when I pray again, I lost the joy. And then God told me, you try to do something now. So I call her again. And I apologize, not, not that I share with her was wrong, but that if I made her unhappy, please forgive me. But she was still angry. And then hang up the phone again. And then I said, I already done what I can do. And then I rejoice in the Lord and I have the joy again. And God said, from now on, any problem that comes to you, handle it like that. So that's how I handle it. And then the more I handle it, the more I say I want to be free. I want to be joyful like the angels in heaven. Oh, oh hallelujah, oh yes, oh, hallelujah, Lord, I worship you. The more I relax, the more things go better with me. Hallelujah. Amen. And many people saw my teaching online.